hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I know I've been away for a little bit, and many of you that only follow me on YouTube uh, think that I've been gone for a while, and I haven't been doing anything, but the truth is, and the links will be in the description below, uh, if you check out my other sites where I post things, you will see that um, I did put up a new series on this other, these other sites that are not allowed on Google Google Tube, we'll call it, because that's what it is. It, it's Google Tube. Uh, the truth, the narrative, and the facts behind what is being pushed is not allowed. And it's a shame, because if I could get you all to go to these other sites, then I would not have to mix words. But we need to look at why is America failing, and why will America fail? I guess that's the thing. Why will America fail? Why will America fail? Because of the people. We have to ask ourselves, where is the truth? The truth is only what you care to believe to be true. And those that are pushing what they say and claim to be facts, even though you can truly see with your own eyes that what is being pushed is not true. All I've seen in the past 18 to 19 months since this whole lie started is people continue to feel like they have to produce one video right after another and prove to people that it's fake. Look at how they're lying. We know they're lying. We know the censorship is real. We know the totalitarianism is everywhere. And why is it happening? Is because the people are allowing it. Why is Australia become a third world totalitarian communist country? Because the people are allowing it. They're not, you know, just because a citizenry is not armed does not mean they can't fight back there's many ways to fight back the problem is people are afraid of death me I'm not afraid of death many of you that know me you know that I'm not long for this world I fight every day for every breath I take and it is what it is. I do not fear death. I do not fear what simple man on this earth will do to this body of flesh. I really could not care less. I fight. I fight for my family. I fight for my boys that deserve a future of freedom and liberty. You know, I, I hear so many people push and push and push them. They can't do this and they can't do that. Well, it's against the law and it's unconstitutional. Then why is it happening over and over and over again? And these people waste their breath every single day. Complaining, crying, bitching. It's not right it's not right it's not right well i'll tell you you know why they keep doing it and why it keeps getting worse and why it continues the way it is is because words are nothing words are nothing we were shown in the past four years that americans are not willing to stand up and fight for their own freedoms and their own liberties and their own justice they're not even willing to stand up and fight for God. People are censoring themselves. People are... They're so afraid of offending somebody. Well, let me put it this way. 
if Jesus was a, afraid of offending somebody, then what he did for mankind would never have happened. It never would have happened. He would not have stood up to the scribes and the Pharisees. He, he would not have stood up to the Jewish leadership that was leading their people astray. But he stood up. And he died for his truth. But not only did he die for his truth, he died for us. He died for our sins. And why did he have to die for our sins? Is because the atonement for sin is blood. It is death. When you look back through the Old Testament and you look into Leviticus and Deuteronomy, it tells of what the atonement for sin was. We, we hear of this, the sacrifices and the offerings unto God that the Jewish people had to do all the time to atone for their sins and to be forgiven. Now, that offering is no longer there because the gospel and Jesus Christ was given unto the whole world and Jesus was the final sacrifice for all of us. Now, all we have to do is believe in Jesus and follow his teachings to the best of our ability. I understand nobody is perfect. We are all just sinners. But if in our heart, if we say one thing, but in our heart we mean something different, and we feel something different, God knows that. Jesus knows that. They know what is in our heart. When you do something, when you say something, and you got people convinced that you're doing it for their good, but in your heart, you're looking for yourself, for yourself, for recognition, for fame, for fortune, for whatever reason, then you're not doing it for mankind. You're doing it for yourself. And God knows that. And Jesus knows that. This, this is the very reason why in the end, on the judgment day, when we hear that Jesus will stand up and declare, depart from me, you doers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And th there's people that will be screaming, did, did I not praise your name amongst the people? Did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not fight for your righteousness? But their road to hell was paved with good intentions because it was not for other people, it was for themselves. I've never asked for nothing. I've asked for a moment of your time. And I put out different things to inform people so you can make the right decision. But at the same time, what's missing in the world today the people standing up for their own rights they're looking for others to do it for them they're looking for some savior politician to come along and he's going to put it all right and he's going to fix it all and all these people we're going to elect into office they're going to make it all right for all of us and you're missing the whole point They've got the people fighting over the right wing and the left wing. And there is no right and left wing. It is the government against us. When have, if the right wing has been in power, what have they done for America? Nothing. When the left wing is in power, what do they do for America? Nothing. And we see what's happening now. We see the massive inflation and devaluing of our dollar so that 
everything is the the prices are skyrocketing and why because our money is worthless we are seeing people coming into this country illegally being treated better than the very people being forced to fund it all and to the point where they are losing so much funding from the people that now they have resorted to printing trillions and trillions of worthless dollars when i grew up a canadian dollar was worth 67 cents in america now that is just reversed that has reversed now a canadian dollar is worth like a dollar 30 in america why? Not because Canada has grown such a large economy and made their dollar more valuable than ours. It's that we have devalued ours faster than Canada has. Canada is well on the fast track of doing the same thing, yes. But in America, if the people are not going to stand up and do what is needed, to be done to save America then there is no saving America as I said in one of my past videos of people want a revival a revival of God and God's gonna heal this land no God's not God's looking for his servants and his saints he is looking for those that will stand up for him stand up for his truth and his righteousness and will turn from those that are doing iniquity and will turn from those that are believing whatever the latest video is on YouTube it, it's it's getting sad when's the last time you sat down and you found somebody that was speaking the truth and you went back through their past videos or do you only just go to the what what whatever's new today I understand there's people out there that they live on this censored and this evil pathetic platform and they dig and they dig and they dig and you know it is true a person will only believe and will only watch what they already believe when they're digging through they're not going to listen to somebody that is saying something that might change what they already believe so they're only seeking out that and what they already believe if it's true or not and that's not helping anybody that's not saving anybody's soul that's not saving this country that's not putting things right and the way it should be done it is actually destroying it because oh you like this person and you're gonna believe everything that comes out of their mouth and you're gonna believe so many off-the-wall things and you're going to turn your back on the truth because, well, it doesn't fit what you already believe. It doesn't fit your narrative. It doesn't, I guess, it doesn't get people supporting you. It doesn't get people patting you on the back. It doesn't get people, I don't know what, liking you. I don't do this to get this big, large following. And that's why I, I won't name the people, but I know why. There's a certain amount of people that no longer really listen to me or, or even care. Why? Because I am no longer the big podcaster that I was. I no longer have the thousands of people listening to me. I can, when I was doing that, Yes, I had people coming out of the woodwork. They wanted me on their shows. They wanted wanted me to help them. They wanted to use my audience to grow their audience. That's all it was. 
They wanted to use me and my popularity at that time to grow their popularity and their show or their channel. And I understand that. I know that's how superficial people have become today. The next greatest person that everybody's talking about. So everybody's got to get this person on their show. And everybody's got to talk about that person. And everybody's... Come on. The effect of a lie is not that it's untrue. But it's how many people you can convince that the lie is true. Clickbait. Sweet words. Oh, I, these people sound so intelligent. And they use all these big words and all this big explanation. Let no man deceive you by any means. That's why America's failing. Because so many people are being deceived. So many people are being led down the wrong path. Why did my YouTube never grow? Because I never tried to grow it. I wasn't going to sit down and do a video a day just to grow big, large, humongous followers and get thousands and thousands of views because what good's that? I've seen what that's done to people. I've seen how many people grew their channels on the backs of somebody else just to take that person and throw them into the trash can. Why? Because while well, I grew my my following now, so I don't need you anymore. Now it's all about me, me, me. It's the same thing when it comes to the churches. And it's the same thing. It's because of the internet that God is disgusted with his children here on this earth. Yes, God so loved the earth, he gave his only begotten son. But at the same time, he is a God of love and understanding. But at the same time, we cannot forget that God is a God of wrath. When your child does wrong, do you not discipline your own children? If you had a child that once a day was throwing a rock through busting a window, are you just going to, don't do that today, Junior. You know, this is costing us a lot of money, and you pay the money and you replace the window, and tomorrow he throws a rock through a window again. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, at what point are you really going to sit down and discipline this child and say enough is enough? I love you dearly, you are my child, but now you must be punished severely for these crimes that you just keep committing. Well, God's the same way. God is merciful, that he is. But you must be merciful in yourself. We were told to turn from these people that are doing evil, but yet, people don't. They continue to try to gain popularity through the very people who are condemning them. Oh, but they're my friend. Oh, but it, it's my brother or my sister. I walked away from my brothers and sisters. I got tired of being treated like dirt. I got tired of the insults and the cut downs and the belittling I'm going to live my life for my family and there are people I care about but there are also people I care a lot about but I will no longer I don't I don't constantly bug people you, you want to talk to me you know how to get a hold of me if you don't want to talk to me, I don't care. If you don't want to discuss things with me, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Because I don't care what people think of me. I really don't. Love me or hate me, I don't care. 
It, it's either or. If you love me, great. If you hate me, fine. And this is where we need to get back to in America. And that's exactly what we need to do. And for these people that are doing harm and doing wrong, they need what they need. And you know what I mean. We need to stand up. Because nobody's going to do it for you. Just because you're getting... You know, the, the biggest thing in America today, the problem is, is that so many people are living often somebody else. They're living often government handouts and state checks and government checks and welfare and all this free stuff just handed to them. So they don't care about you. They really don't. They don't care who produces it or where it comes from they don't care because once a month their little ebt card gets filled and their bank account gets a big infusion of money for them to live the life the way they want to live it with no comprehension of what it's doing to america and what it's doing to the rest of us many of you may think i'm on this big disability nope I'm not. I live off in what I had my whole life. What I created and I produced my whole life. That's what I live on. That's what my family lives on. That's how it's done. Because when I die, I can't take it with me. So I'll use it today. But I am not going to demand that I deserve this and I deserve that because no, I don't. I don't deserve anything. Nobody does. Nobody deserves anything that somebody else has to produce. And definitely nobody deserves anything that the government has to print and create out of thin air. That's not helping. There's so many lies out there. And until people wake up and realize God is not something that can be molded in the way that you want God to be. If you're only seeking out those that tell you exactly what you want to hear, then I'll tell you right now, your ending is called hell you will be in the lake of fire you were you are one of those doers of iniquity because you are creating god in the truth that you want not the truth that god is look at the parables there's so many lessons within the parables that man need to learn why did Jesus talk in parables to those that did not understand? Because they could not understand what the disciples understood. That's why he done it in parables. That's why he talked of the rich man that hoarded everything and died. His life was called upon and taken Nobody got nothing. He didn't get the wealth. Nobody got the wealth. Nobody. Nothing. What about the one that gave up everything for one plot of land? Because he knew there were jewels buried. There was wealth buried on that land. So he gave up everything. And people, why are you doing this? And he bought that land that had the wealth upon it. That parable is simple. Give up this world and buy your salvation and you'll have everything. Give it all away. And you know what the thing is? is you don't have to buy your salvation. Just accept Jesus Christ. Accept the truth. Take Jesus into your heart. 
Take the truth into your heart. Change your ways. Be a better person. And never overlook those that are speaking the truth. I will only tell you the truth if it hurts or not. The truth is the truth. For those years I'd done the podcast, I, I talked to a lot of people on the side. I helped a lot of people. I, a lot of people got angry at me, but by the time it was all said and done, they saw that I was telling the truth. You have nobody to blame for your hardship in your life today than you yourself. A person's financial hardship is not what they make, but what they spend. A person's salvation is only what they are willing to sacrifice. This world is worth nothing. This world will give you nothing, but this world will take it all in the blink of an eye. Those that are changing the meanings and they're not even telling you the truth of what the Bible truly is. They're not. They're just making it sound good for popularity. We can't do that anymore. I tell you the truth because only you can save your soul. I cannot do it for you. The book of Daniel teaches us clearly. The biggest one, Job. The book of Job. I know everybody talks about, you know, oh, Satan took everything from Job and and basically tortured Job and Job stayed true to God and in the end God gave it all back. But you're missing the whole point in the start of that book. Job needed to be taught a lesson. He needed to be humbled. Job was a kind, righteous, caring person. But he had to be taught that he could not pay the tithes for the people for their salvation. They had to do it for themselves. They had to sacrifice. The 10% is the 10%. They have to be willing to give up that 10% for God, for the atonement, for their sin. Pay their tithe unto the church, unto God. Their sacrifice. You know, when you look at it, if you made a thousand dollars this year and your tithe was 10%, then you pay a hundred dollars. But for the man that made a million dollars, that's a hundred thousand dollars. For the man that made 10, it's a thousand. You see, that's how it works. That's how it always worked. The more you had, the more you paid. The less you had, the less you paid. But it was a sacrifice. God sacrificed his son for mankind. Would you sacrifice your life for mankind? Your son's life for mankind? I sacrifice everything every day. And I do it for others. I do it for my family. I do it for my my boys. I sacrifice. Because I know I have to. That's the way the game is played. But now, who out there is willing to sacrifice everything for a nation? We hear many stories throughout the Bible of men that did just that. Daniel sacrificed everything for a nation. 
Noah sacrificed everything for a way of life. Moses sacrificed everything for a nation. King David sacrificed everything for a nation. Now who in America today is willing to stand up and sacrifice everything to save this nation? That's what God's looking for. Those are the ones God is, is looking for. We must remember one clear fact and one clear truth. And I'll leave you with this. God does not choose the qualified. He qualifies the chosen. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is No Way, out.